Okay, to create our magazine cover, we're going to select New Image, and I'm going to choose a width of about 400 pixels and a height of about 500. Now, we could use inches and get the exact measurement, but that would give us a very high resolution um, image, and we just want to create a smaller version of it. I'm going to choose the background color of white. And I have here my 400 wide by 500 high image. And the first thing that I'll do is I'll get my layers palette out, and I'll notice that I just have my background layer that I can't even adjust my opacity. So I'm going to automatically create a new layer, and I'm going to call this my background. And now my background, I can then get my fill bucket and choose any color and fill this background. Or I can choose by clicking on the little triangle here on my foreground chip under styles, I could choose to use a gradient. Now, if I do not want a linear gradient like this, I could click on the actual gradient chip here and I could change that to a sunburst gradient. I can invert that so that it's just the opposite. And I can choose different foreground and background colors. And then I can apply that as my background. Now notice I chose my layer, my background, so that if I want to I can change its opacity and fade it out. I'm going to create another layer here. I'm going to call this the magazine title. And on this layer I'm going to put some text. And my magazine theme is going to be a guitar magazine. So I'm going to choose some Guitar World, mine is going to be called. Now I'm going to change the stroke to a solid color. I'm going to change the fill to a solid color. I'm going to fill this with a dark, dark color like that. And I can take a look at what that looks like. And I'll change it from italics to normal. There we go. And I might need to make it a little bit bigger. And let's make it bold. And there's my guitar world. And let's give that, before we deselect it, let's give that a shadow. So let's go up to our three dimensional effects, our drop shadow. I'm going to choose black. And I may make the blur a little bit less. An opacity up there. If I need to increase the vertical and horizontal offset, I can. Something like that. And let's just give it a little bit more blur. And we have something there. We'll deselect by going to Selections None or use the shortcut Control D. There we go. Now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a banner or border area on this. So I'm going to create another layer and we'll call this the top border. And with this one, with this layer, I'm going to hide my other layers for now. Just so I can hide them and not have to worry about them. I'm going to choose my rectangle tool and I won't even worry about feathering or anti-aliasing. So I'm going to choose it here up to the very upper left corner and I want it to be about this big all the way across. I'm going to fill that with a solid color and let's choose a color that I like, something a little lighter. There's normal. it's visible and let's go a little bit lighter we have to make sure that it's visible now if we bring all of these and change our title to the top we'll see that that's there like that and then we could take our magazine border and give it some opacity if we needed to 
I'll even give it its own go to my top border I'll even give it its own effect for 3d effect and drop shadow something like that I can even change its color a darker brown and we have that let's deselect it and now we want to start adding some content so I have some pictures here I'm going to open up a couple of pictures I have my guitar picture and my tone effects now these pictures will need to be resized I'm going to include them in there so the first thing I'm going to do here is I, this way I'm going to select this and get rid of all this white background I'm going to use my magic wand and this magic wand has a tolerance that you can change and this magic wand if I click here notice that it doesn't quite get in the edges so if I increase its tolerance up a little bit click again it starts to get a little closer in there so let's increase its tolerance up to about 20 or 30 select now notice it's very tight now it selected all of the white pixels in the picture that it can reach so I'm going to invert it and I'm going to switch it so that it, it selects the entire opposite I'm going to copy that go back to my guitar world picture and I'm going to paste it as its own new layer. And then I can rename this layer Effects Processor. Now let's take this layer and we'll resize it a little bit. So let's just use our deformation tool here. So I'll resize this, trying to maintain the height and width aspect ratio. And once we get that the way we like it, we'll apply that. And then I can give it an effects, a 3D effect, drop shadow. I can even change the color to something in the picture. Like that. Let's get this blue. Alright. And if we want to see what it looks like, we can hit the proof eyeball right there. That'll proof it down the bottom. Maybe it'll make it a little bit blurrier. Something like that. If we don't like the blue, we can always change that to something even lighter. Like that one. That looks good. Click OK. And now I have my effects processor right there. I'll leave that right down there. And I'm going to get my guitar. Close this out. Get my guitar. And let's use the same, same concept. This time, we'll use our magic wand pretty good and we'll invert that selection and I will copy this time I'm going to copy and paste so that it's on a transparent background because I'm going to rotate it first we're going to rotate it right about 45 degrees I guess what we'll do first is let's just copy that and paste it in here as a new layer. And I'll resize it a little bit. And I'll rotate it using this handle. So we get the right dial. There we go. We'll apply that. And now we'll put a nice effect for drop shadow. and our magazine starting to take off. So now, one of the things that I, I like to do when creating the magazine cover is to create um, a text box that I can put some words in, but I want this text box to be semi-transparent. So I'm going to create a new layer. And we'll call this text box 1. And I'm going to create using my selection tool here, this tool options box. I'm going to select rounded rectangle. I'm going to feather it just a little bit. And I'm going to draw a text box. And let's fill that with a solid color. We'll give it a 3D effect, or an artistic effect. 
We'll drop shadow. We can proof that to see what it looks like. And then what I'm going to do is fade it out so it's semi-transparent and give it one more 3D effect for drop shadow, this time choosing a darker color. I like that contrast that it gives it. We'll deselect it. And now I'm going to create another layer which I can put text or text box one on. And in this case, I'm going to start putting some new text on here. And we'll bring the size down. Even down to 18. And I'm going to change the no stroke color and put some black text. And this will be new. Change that. One of these. We'll choose a good font for us. We are Arial Bold, Arial Black. We'll go down a little bit. We'll change that from Bold. And we'll put in here New Guitars for 2008. Let's make that a little bit smaller. New Guitars for 2008. And let's test that and see if it works. Put that right there. Now that's a little too big, so we could delete that. And then just shrink it down a little bit more. New guitar for 2008. Now remember, that's on that layer right there. We could add some more text. And this time, let's change this font to Arial Narrow. Give them a little bit bigger. And we'll just make up some guitars. The Takamini. The Fender. And the Gibson. We can highlight that and we can center them. Well, let's click OK. And we'll center that up. Let's make one more text box down here. And I think what we'll do, we'll create one more text box. So this will be text box two. And text box two will be down here, so we'll use a rounded rectangle again. And we'll fill this with our solid color. And again, let's give it an effect of 3D effect drop shadow. And we'll choose our light color first. And if I bring its opacity down, I'll then just go ahead and give it another effect to see how it looks. This one, a darker effect. And we'll deselect that. And I'll make my text text 2 for text box 2 and this one we'll get our text tool this one's going to be effects for 2008 we'll give that the aerial black now let's choose just the normal aerial for this one. Maybe we'll just bold it. Let's see how big that is. Give it enough. Give it a stroke and a fill color. I'll bring that down here. Okay. I'll we'll add some more text. And let's give it aerial narrow. Behringer, make that a little bit smaller. Behringer, let's see, Behringer. 
those are too light. So let's go ahead and take the stroke color off. Just leave it the black fill. And maybe give it a little bold. And have something like that. And now what we can do is we can start arranging our layers by using our mover tool here. We can move our text box over here, we can take our text over there. We could bring this over and we could start moving things around. Layer 5, we can pull up there. Layer 5 we see is our guitar so we can rename that. Move this or this layer. That's your effects processor. We can put that right about there. But we can bring this one right there. Put that behind it. It's a good idea. And it sort of floats in between the two text boxes. And we have what's starting to look like a very good magazine cover. And this is how you use different layers. Make sure you put everything on its own layer. You can even put this text on its layer and then put the other text on its own layer. Very important to separate layers. That way, if you need to change something, you can just delete one layer and not have to delete the entire thing. Let's save this as our PSP file. magazine cover and that file we can still open up and use and look at all of our layers.